What's coming on guys? Dorko back again. Hope you are fantastic today and welcome back to one of the Five Nights at Freddy's 6 video where today I wanted to explain the Five Nights at Freddy's 6 ending so you guys get a better understanding about it because I know a lot of people have been confused about it but um, I've made lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of notes about Five Nights at Freddy's 6 as a whole and I think I've got a nice idea on what it's about. Um, like I said, I'm not Scott. I'm not the creator of the game. So obviously things might be wrong. But I feel like this is a nice idea on what the Five Nights at Freddy's 6 ending is about. And the whole plan of Henry on bringing these animatronics into the facility to get rid of everything once and for all. So yeah, before we talk about the ending, let's get a summary on what Five Nights at Freddy's 6 is about. What is this location and where is it? We know that the location of this facility, Pizzeria, is in Utah. I'm not comparing the game with the books, but the locations of the original Freddy Fazbear's pizzas uh, were in Utah in the novel as well. Nice little fact there. So we get hired by Fazbear Entertainment and Henry to test automated response times and reactions from vintage interactive attractions following audio stimuli. The purpose of this tape is to test automated response times and reactions from vintage interactive attractions following audio stimuli. Those are the interviews after the day shift what we do in the office. Each night we go to the back alley as instructed to do specifically by Henry. He's instructed us to go at the back alley every single night and if they fit the criteria of paragraph four, we bring them into the room for the audio stimuli interview. If you are playing this tape, that means that not only have you been checking outside at the end of every shift, as you were instructed to do, but also that you have found something that meets the criteria of your special obligations under paragraph four. After we've done that interview, we seal the room off and keep that animatronic inside and we never return. There's been a lot of debate on what paragraph four is. It spoke about all the time during this game and Scott talked about it during the teasers for the game in the source code. What is paragraph four? If these animatronics have to meet the criteria of paragraph four, they all must need a similarity with each other. So Springtrap, Molten Freddy, Lefty, and baby need to all be in the conditions of paragraph four. So what's the similarity between them? They're all possessed for a start, that's a nice idea. Paragraph four under the requirements might mean that they need to be possessed by spirits. But that's a nice little idea because this is Henry's trap, guys. If they don't fall under paragraph four, possessed by someone, then the trap's not gonna work. You're not gonna just burn an animatronic who's not possessed by anybody. So that's the first part, that's what we first get in Five Nights at Freddy's 6. Our other job is being the manager at this pizzeria. The facility is provided to us by Fazbear Entertainment, aka Henry. He gives us the room, he gives us some money to start and set up our pizzeria. Then after that, when we've set the day up, we go into our office during the day, surprisingly. This isn't a night shift, it's during the day and we print off orders and print things using our computer. That doesn't mean your job is finished, however. You have a lot of work to do while patrons eat their pizza in the other room. Once you've taken care of all the items on your to-do list, you can log off for the day. That's basically it. Um, our job is to salvage all of the animatronics what are under paragraph four. If we don't do that, we get fired and Henry is very disappointed in us. We signed up to salvage these possessed animatronics to conclude the end of Five Nights at Freddy's, Henry's trap. If we don't salvage these animatronics and all of the animatronics are not in this trapped facility, that's it. it. We don't get the good ending. We only get the good ending cutscene when all of the salvaged animatronics are in this facility because Henry can destroy everything, including us, the player, as well as himself. If you guys haven't seen the ending cutscene yet, you need to. Uh, watch a video or watch my playthrough of it. You need to see this ending cutscene to be able to understand what I'm talking about. Start of the cutscene, we're introduced with Baby again. This is 100% Baby, and Baby is William Afton's daughter. We know this by now, it's obvious. We knew this in Sister Location. William Afton's daughter gets killed by Baby, and then she then possesses Baby. Interestingly, though, Baby's personality is a lot more different in this game. She's turned more Killer Instinct. 
She wants to kill things and she wants to make her daddy proud. Her daddy's obviously William Afton. Now we can do what we were created to do and be complete. I will make you proud, daddy. And William Afton's a killer. So you can see the connection between them. Seems like Baby's personality has definitely changed and there's a reason why, which I'll talk about in a second. Baby thinks that she's tricked us. <laughs> No, she hasn't. She thinks that all the souls in this location are now gathered for all these kids and everything at this pizzeria. The gift for her to kill kids. That's what Baby was programmed to do. That's what the Funtime animatronics were programmed to do. If you don't remember, in Sister Location, um, William Afton created these animatronics to kill kids. But obviously, that's not true. It was a complete trap by Henry. Baby's name has now been confirmed to be Elizabeth. William Afton's daughter is Elizabeth. Connection terminated. I'm sorry to interrupt you, Elizabeth. If you still even remember that name. Not only that, Molten Freddy has been called here by Henry, tricked, as well as Springtrap, as well as Lefty. The reason why Molten Freddy is here as well is probably he got lured here again because of kids. The animatronics were designed to kill kids. It's a new pizzeria. Loads of kids are there. That's why Molten Freddy got lured there. Springtrap probably exactly the same. Springtrap probably got lured here again because of kids. He wanted to kill more kids, etc. It's in his blood to kill children. Lefty, on the other hand, is a little bit different. Um, Henry says that he knew Lefty would come here, and that's because Lefty is the puppet. It's even confirmed in the ending cutscene that Lefty is the puppet. My daughter, if you can hear me, I knew you would return as well. It's in your nature to protect the innocent. I'm sorry that on that day, the day you were shut out and left to die. No one was there to lift you up into their arms, the way you lifted others into yours. And then, what became of you? I should have known you wouldn't be content to disappear. Not my daughter. I couldn't save you then. So let me save you now. I couldn't save you on that day. And then it shows the cutscene of um, the puppet mini game, which we all get, where the girl's trapped outside. It's the first victim of William Afton, who then possesses the puppet. I'll show you a little clip of the mini game now, guys. Um, you see, clearly see, that she's dead in the alleyway. The puppet tries to save her because that's what it was programmed to do. Uh, look after children with the security bracelets on. The rain shuts the puppet down, but then she possesses the puppet. That's the origins of the first murder. You might be thinking why the puppet is inside Lefty. That's because the puppet got trapped inside Lefty. Lefty was created to trap the puppet inside. And that's because um, I personally think that the puppet was giving life to all the murdered children during William Afton's killings. The puppet needed to be stopped from doing this. The puppet also seemed to be more of a supernatural being where it could do what it wanted and flow everywhere where it wanted to from the looks of the mini games. So it seems like Lefty was created by Henry to keep her in place and then lefty obviously turns up here but yeah this is the trap what henry planned to do henry planned this for a while to trap the animatronics himself and our protagonist inside he even says there was a way out for us but we were but we are in place like it's he knows that we don't want to leave and that's because we're playing as michael afton and to you my brave volunteer who somehow found this job listing not intended for you Although there was a way out planned for you, I have a feeling that's not what you want. 
I have a feeling that you are right where you want to be. We know that we're playing as Michael Afton because a lot of the voice acting in this game hints to that. So Springtrap at first says, You may not recognize me at first, but I assure you, that's still me. That's because Michael has probably met Springtrap or his father before. Obviously, he's seen his father before. But, you know, some little subtle hints like that. Molten Freddy also says a specific line. Together again. Also, Baby says very subtle hints as well. You should have known I'd find you. And that's why we're staying at the location, because we are a part of this as well. And we're dead. We got brought back to life as well in the sister location minigame, so technically we're still a spirit as well in a corpse. So we're a part of this as well, which is why we all disappear and get burnt as well. Henry dies as well. Lefty, aka the puppet. Baby, Molten Freddy and Springtrap all gone. That's it. The end. A very specific line, which again I was talking about how Baby wants to be a killer more than an innocent girl, is Henry says a specific quote. And to you monsters trapped in the corridors, be still and give up your spirits. They don't belong to you. That's because, guys, the animatronics are stronger than the children's spirits. The animatronics are in control in this situation now. It's still the same with Springtrap as well. If you remember in Five Nights at Freddy's 3, William is still inside Springtrap, but the animatronic is still stronger than him. That's why he's lured to sounds of kids. That's what Spring Bonnie was designed to do. The animatronics move to noises. It's the same in this uh, trap place as well. Sounds in the vents, the animatronics are drawn near to them. You don't even realize that you are trapped. Your lust for blood has driven you in endless circles, chasing the cries of children in some unseen chamber, always seeming so near, yet somehow out of reach. But you will never find them. None of you will. And again, even Henry even hints that babies, the animatronic is now in control because he says, Elizabeth, if you even remember that name. Connection terminated. I'm sorry to interrupt you, Elizabeth. If you still even remember that name. It's because the animatronics are stronger than the spirits. It's the same with Molten Freddy as well. The Ennard animatronic, it is confirmed Ennard, which I'm going to talk about a little bit. Uh, Molten Freddy is Ennard, guys. Um, and again, it's the fun time animatronics all merged in one, apart from Baby. And they also have the killer instinct of the de their design to kill children by William. And that's why we're attracted to noises of children and stuff, because they're bloodlust for killing. That's what they're designed to do. They do have spirits inside. Specifically, I want to say three spirits inside Molten Freddy. From the blueprint, we can see at the top left that there is Funtime Foxy, Funtime Freddy and Ballora. There's no blueprints that um, Biddy Babs or the Minarinas are inside this, and that's because I don't feel like they were possessed. So we've got Elizabeth's spirit. We've got three spirits inside Funtime Freddy. Um, we've got Henry's daughter, aka the puppet. We've got Springtrap. They all get burned to death in this amazing end of the game. You may be wondering what ever happened to the original spirits. Like, why, why are these the only spirits left? And that's because... They were set free during Five Nights at Freddy's 3. In Five Nights at Freddy's 3, Happiest Day, Golden Freddy, Freddy, Foxy, Chica, and Bonnie, their spirits, the five original murdered children, are now set free, thanks to the Happiest Day minigame. Now, I, I think a lot of people are gonna say, but what about the puppet? The puppet was there as well. Yes, the puppet was, but the puppet had unfinished business to do, and that's why the puppet's mask falls last, because her spirit is still active obviously because the puppets in this final game the puppet had unfinished business probably with William Afton but with the other children's spirits as well she's not going to rest until all of the spirits are free I'm gonna talk a little bit out I'm gonna talk a tiny bit about the origins of Molten Freddy um, only a little bit because this is, I just wanted to explain the ending but I know a lot of comments will be asking how is Molten Freddy entered um, and Baby's not with them. Um, there's a secret screen, guys, which shows Molten Freddy, and you can see the eyes of the original Ennard and the wires and everything. The reason why Baby's not a part of it is because Scott talked about this in the source code of his website. Ennard, aka Funtime Freddy, had a conversation with Baby. Baby got kicked out of the group. Baby got ejected from the original Ennard, and then Baby 
went somewhere to repair herself, which is how we see her in Five Nights at Freddy's 6. Molten Freddy does exactly the same. His appearance has changed because he's gone to find parts as well. And Springtrap's appearance has changed because after the fire of Five Nights at Freddy's 3, he obviously got a lot more withered and rotten. He loses an arm for crying out loud and he finds extra parts from suits, specifically I think other Spring Bonnie suits, um, to repair himself as well. That's one side of it. That could be why they look so different. The evidence is there as well, specifically from Baby. Personally, I think Baby went back to the original sister location um, and got parts from there. Specifically, the lights inside a chest are the same disco lights in the sister location office. But she still looks very different. She's got a, she's got hair, she's got a tiara, and she's got rollerblades on. That's not what the original baby looked like, so how, is, how does she look so different? There possibly could have been a prototype baby in the location somewhere. The original baby design. That's the only suggestion I have, honestly. The other way we could say is that there was something, something happened after FNAF 3 before FNAF 6. And a lot of people are suggesting an, another horror attraction like a freak show. And someone bought the animatronics from an auction or salvaged them again, but changed the appearance of them, made them spooky, sharp teeth, a claw. Um, this is hinted um, by the posters around the location, such as the, um, the clowns in the back alley, the clown advertisements and the circus advertisements and the um, ventriloquist advertisement and the clown and the bear and stuff like that like a circus so some people think after FNAF 3 before FNAF 6 there was a location or a, a freak show attraction like Five Nights at Freddy's 3 horror attraction with the sister location animatronics well yeah guys I think that explains a lot of things about the ending and I also added some extra things as well because I know people are going to ask in the comment section so yeah, what basically happened is this is set after Five Nights at Freddy's 3. This is the end of the timeline, so the last game in the timeline after everything. Henry makes a plan to go back to the original location, guys. This is the original location, by the way, guys. This is where the first murder happened. Now, the reason why I say that is because it's the same back alley where the first child died. So to me, this feels like the original Fredbear's Family Diner. That's my opinion though. I do think it's true. I really do think that is true though. Because it, to me, it seems like the same back alley where the girl died. It's just there, you know? You can see that it is. Why are they getting dropped off at the back alley with the same trash cans and same wall with the posters on as the mini game? It just seems obvious to me that this is the original location. Also, the locations in Utah as well, where the original Fred Bear's family diner was as well. In the novel, obviously. But yeah, it just seems fitting that the last game will be at the last location. And it's all destroyed. Also, I can talk a little bit about the audio tape as well. There's a secret audio tape which goes more about Henry's plans. Henry talks about creating a monster with William. It's only now that I understand the depth of the depravity of this creature, this monster that I unwillingly helped to create. And that to me is Baby. So Henry and William both created Baby, but Henry didn't know William's intentions on what he was going to do with Baby. Baby and the other Funtime animatronics were created to kill kids in another way. These aren't the original murders, guys. These are after the original murders. Remember, William Afton used the Spring Bonnie suit to kill the original five children. If you remember in Five Nights at Freddy's 1, there was a lot of inv investigations. It, it looks like he was a suspect and he almost got put into prison. But because he was in a Spring Bonnie costume, you know, you can't see who's inside. William Afton probably didn't want to take risks anymore. So why not make someone else do it? Why not make animatronics do it instead? As if what he had already done wasn't enough. He found a new way to desecrate, to humiliate, to destroy. As if the suffering wasn't enough, the loss of innocence, the loss of everything to so many people. Small souls trapped in prisons of my making, now set to new purpose, and used in ways I never thought imaginable. And that's the origins of the sister location Funtime animatronics. They were designed to capture children inside their suits and kill them and the scooper was used to make the animatronics possessed. How sickening is that? William Afton is a pretty fricked up dude, right? And Henry was tricked by William. He talks about it. Henry was manipulated by William. 
and he knows what's happened. The sister location animatronics are all possessed now, so he needs to stop that. So, what he does, he sets this trap. I don't know how those tiny breaths of life came to inhabit those machines, but they will never find rest now, not like this. I have to call them all back, all of them, together in one place. And that's it. That's all you need to know. Henry makes a trap at the original location in the future. He lures all the animatronics who are still possessed, including William, into this location. We work with Henry. We have applied for this job to do everything he says under paragraph four, leaving the facility, going in the back alley, getting the salvaged animatronics each night giving them the audio test to see if they're active and possessed. If they fit under paragraph four, we seal them off and keep them. And we place them in the vents above the facility. They are then officially trapped and each day we have to fend them off. And each day we bring another salvaged animatronic inside who fit under paragraph four, possession. When we've got all these possessed animatronics, including William and Lefty, AKA the puppet, we're done. It's game over. One last night, we fend them off. Henry has trapped them all. Everybody burns. The end. That's it. It's over. And that's my explanation on the Five Nights at Freddy's 6 ending. I think I've explained every point of the ending, I think. So yeah, Five Nights at Freddy's 6 is the end of the timeline. All the spirits are set free. It's over. There will be no other game set after Five Nights at Freddy's 6. Five Nights at Freddy's 6 is the end of the timeline. There's no doubt about it. So yeah, that's all I need to say. I know it's a long video, but it needed some explanation for you guys, okay? Thank you so much for watching, guys. Please leave a like if you enjoyed. I really do appreciate it. Lots of love, and I'll see you all next time.